Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dave Jacobson. I'm Senior Applications Engineer here at Lambda Research. And we'd like to welcome everybody to this afternoon's webinar. And the topic of today's webinar is going to be on the new Trace Pro Solar Utility, um, some of the features and how to use it. As I mentioned, my name is Dave Jacobson, Senior Application Engineer. And today's presenter is going to be Mike Govin, our Vice President of Sales here at Lambda Research. Uh, the format of today's webinar is going to be a presentation probably about 25 to 30 minutes long, maybe a little bit longer, followed by a question and answer period. And at any point during the webinar, please feel free to type in any questions you may have in the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel, and then we'll address any questions at the end of the webinar. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Well, thank you very much for that introduction, Dave. Uh, in addition to this webinar, you can view all of our past webinars directly on our website in the webinar section. We also have some tutorial videos up there. We also have the Trace Pro step-by-step -step tutorials. And there's information on upcoming Trace Pro training classes if you're interested in that as well. Our current Trace Pro release is 7.2.5, and it was released on October 23rd. Uh, the 7.2.6 release should be out probably in the next week. These releases can be downloaded by anyone with a current maintenance and support agreement, and you just need to go on the website to do that. The outline for today's webinar is pretty much an introduction to the new Trace Pro Solar Utility. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how to do a solar concentrator simulation with, uh, with Trace Pro, and then we're going to add the Solar Utility to do an in-depth over period type analysis. The Solar Utility is comprised of just three simple windows and dialogues to set it up, and I'll go through those steps. And finally, we'll do a demonstration of the Solar Utility uh, using a U.S. patent on a 2 Fresnel 1 CPC type system. So let's go through and show you how to use a TracePro Solar Utility. TracePro now has an automated utility that helps you run these simulations, and I think it's very easy to use. First of all, you're going to need to set up a solar collection simulation in TracePro. So you're going to have to create all the geometry of your solar collector system. This could be an entire farm, or it could just be simply a solar panel. So in TracePro, you would create your light source, which is most likely the sun. Uh, you create all your optics, do a ray trace, and then analyze the system for that particular setup. So. To do this, we're going to talk about how you're going to set up light sources, how you would set up the optics and where you'd set them up, how to do the ray trace, and then do the analysis. So there are two easy light sources that you can use in TracePro. You can make all types of advanced optical geometries, or you can make them in a CAD system and then bring them over. And then you can use TracePro's accurate and high-speed ray trace using multi-threading to do that. And then, of course, use the comprehensive analysis tools like irradiance maps and candela maps and 3D irradiance to actually see the light on these surfaces. So I talked about easy light sources. There are two. You can use the grid source, which has its built-in beam setup of an angular solar type setup with uniform flux and weighted angle as shown here. You can also use a surface source, which is the spectral type solar. You just pull it out and the angular type solar, and that sets that up for you. You then would want to possibly set up calculated wavelengths, most likely in the visible. So you'd set up a, a calculated wavelength from 0.4 to 0.7. You can put in a whole bunch of samples inside there, and the program will automatically set up the flux and have that source ready for you to ray trace. Now, the next thing you're going to have to do is to create the optical geometry in TracePro. We have a couple things to help you out here. We have the Fresnel Lens Maker, which will insert a Fresnel lens. Then you can also use the Thin Sheet uh, dialog to actually create the Fennel uh, facets and then revolve it into a solid. And we also have a reflective concentrator in the reflector setup uh, of the system, the, the building block. And you can create CPCs and CECs and rectangular concentrators and troughs in that particular utility. So as you see here, uh, we have a Fennel lens defined. There's also advanced optical geometries that you might want to get into. And you can either bring those over from CAD or you can create them inside of TracePro. As you see here, the, um, there's a nice uh, hollow uh, CPC being defined using the insert reflector here. You can see the diagram that shows how to 
actually put the input into that particular dialog. And of course, then you're going to use the high-speed ray trace engine. Uh, after you specify the materials and surface properties, and then the multi-threaded ray trace will go through and do that, do that simulation for you, where you can then use the comprehensive analysis tool to show irradiance maps, candela maps, you can do ray sorting, you can do pass sort tables, and you can do 3D irradiance maps. So, that said, we've now got our geometry in, we've got all our surface and material properties set, and we're ready to do ray tracing. So we start and bring up the solar utility. Now the solar utility considers the position of the sun across your period. It's based on the entrance pupil of the solar collector system to create a sun model. So usually you would put the entrance pupil at the 000, 000 point and specify the size of that entrance pupil in the solar utility. It's an automated simulation. You specify the period and the program does the rest for you. It will go through and iterate until it gets to your, uh, your last time period. And you have complete analysis capabilities in the solar utility. In fact, we have a lot of them built in for you. And we keep track of every single iteration. We have output for every one of those iterations as well. So we're going to have to specify in the utility the sun trajectory. To define the correct light source, you're going to have to specify the incident direction and the total flux of the incident ray. So if you set it up correctly, you can now have everything set up in terms of a whole yearly type simulation. And you can actually evaluate your solar collection system for that yearly period. And it will actually just go through and chunk through and iterate and show you that output. The solar utility includes NREL's solar position algorithm. And of course, NREL is the National Renewable Energy Lab. And it takes into uh, account the date, the longitude and latitude of the solar collector system, the time zone, the altitude and tilt automatically. And of course, you have to specify the sun model that you want to use. You're going to have to specify perhaps the geometry, uh, which is set up automatically in the utility. Uh, we have both, we have two different types of uh, setup for you. There's a, a radiance uh, capability. How much uh, is it a cloudy day? Is it a bright, bright, sunny day? You can specify that. And of course, the wavelengths you want to use for the sun model. So what we do know is that we have an almost parallel light source for the sun. Uh, the radiance of the sun's surface, you actually get to input that. And we have to tell the program what the entrance pupil of the device is and where it's located. What we don't know is the light source shape. So the sun goes back, and after you give it all this information, it actually creates that sun for each one of those periods. So all rays, when you create this solar uh, utility sun, it knows where that position is, and it then makes sure that all the rays from the source pass through the device's entrance pupil. So if you want to specify an exact from time to time period, that's very easy to do. And you can then specify the steps and the interval times uh, for that particular from to period. And if you look at this, you can also see that it's a very simple format. And there is also even a time filter that you can use to specify exactly from to times. When you get done uh, the analysis of the particular system, all of these files are going to be put into a subdirectory that you specify for later viewing. And for these analysis tools, we have things like uh, a 2D chart, uh, flux date table, Radiance and Candela Map Viewer, uh, Total Collected Energy, and in the final 7.3 release, we'll have Flux Reports. So let's take a look at this user interface. There are just three panels, Setup, 3D View, and Result Viewer. And so this is what the solar utility looks like. This is the setup uh, portion of the, uh, the system. Uh, down below there, you see the Result Viewer. And there's two tabs down over here. And right now, we're looking at the Analysis tab, where we're going to specify the entrance pupil, the solar model we want to use, and the from to type time frame. So first of all, in the setup, we want to specify where the solar collection system is located. So for this, we're going to specify the longitude, latitude, the time zone, and the altitude and tile. Now, we can use Google Map to actually verify where we've set our coordinate info, or we can use Google Map to search for where it is and feed that back into the program. There's also a city database that consists of, I think, 12 or 14 different cities, and you can add and delete to that list. So once you've set this and once you've set this up, it's very easy to change or modify or you know, look at different cities using the solar simulation. In the Analysis tab, this is where you're going to set up from and two times. So you can see over here, you've got the from and you've got the to, and in this case, we're actually doing a time period from Monday, October 8th to 
Monday, October 8th from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So this is a one-day type simulation. You can see the longitude and latitude over here. You can also see what the time zone is set up for. So this actually sets everything up for you. You've got the coordinate format set up to auto. The location is going to be Taipei, Taiwan. The entrance pupil is set over here. It tells exactly that we're going to be at the global axis of 000. The zenith direction is 010, so we're pointing up in the y direction. And the north vector is down the uh, z-axis. I'm, I'm sorry, down the x-axis in this case. Uh, the pupil shape is circular, so the entrance pupil for this particular system is going to be a lens, and it's circular, so this makes sense, and it's going to be 8.5 millimeters in radius. The interval that we're going to be using here is, every, is an hourly interview, so I put one over there in my xx colon xx colon xx format. The detector is the detector that we specify in Trace Pro that we want to see the power on. We specify a sun distance. Uh, it should be sufficiently far away so that uh, it actually is a, a far away source, a uh, far enough source that uh, it looks like it's from an infinity. Um, we specify all the interim files that we're going to save for each iteration in the demo subdirectory on your computer. And the name of the files are going to start with test. And we're going to trace 100,000 rays for each one of these simulations that we do across the time period. And our wavelength is set to the middle visible right over here. Okay. We're also going to set the solar model. In this case, I'm just going to set up a simple parallel model coming into the uh, entrance pupil. But you can also specify this as a source property. And we have one built in with the source catalog and source property set over here. You can also specify the, the uh, default solar constant. It is about, uh, for pretty much an average across the whole world, uh, 1067. But if it's cloudy, if you want to have it uh, in a different uh, location, you can change this. This is completely user settable. And you can specify that it's constant, or you can modify it with the Earth's radius vector. So the next window is the 3D view. This allows you to visually see where the sun is when you first start off the calculation. Now, it calculates the position of the sun, and you can ask it to go through your from to time period and show the trajectory. And so it'll do an active type uh, simulation of how the sun is going to move across your collector over that period of time. When the utility is analyzing for periods of time, the sun position is automatically updated, so you'll actually see it chunk through for each one of the, uh, the periods that you've specified using the steps that you've specified. So the result viewer is the final portion of this. And as you can see, we have the capability to show irradiance and candela maps. We have a slider button up here, which allows you to, to go through and look at each one of the positions that you've asked for intervals. So there's your irradiance map, and this would change as you would pull the slider across, and it will show you the iteration. In this case, this is the eighth iteration of 27. You'd also have a nice graph that shows you the amount of power over time. You can see that this one actually went from 6 in the morning. I'm sorry, this actually went from, yeah, I think it is 6 in the morning on the, on the 24th all the way out to, uh, to later in the day. So I think 7 p.m. Uh, so you get the total collected energy. There is both a graph that you can see right now, and there's also a table. And I'll show you that in a second. So once again, the solar result viewer shows either irradiance or candela maps, and a graph or a table of the power on the target over that period. You see this nicely blown up here. This is just for a very nice solar panel, so I have even illumination across, and that's what's being shown down on the left. And for a solar panel, this is what you would expect to see in terms of over several days uh, what the, the power is. And of course, I started it uh, in a summer type setup and it then went out into like a fall, so it's slowly dropping off here as, as we go into the autumn period. If you want to look at candela plots, that's just clicking on the other tab in the result viewer. And here's our table format where we can click on any iteration. And if we click on it, it then shows us that particular candela map over on the left here. Uh, in the final 7.3 release, we'll be able to show flux reports, and that's what I'm showing here. This is written out for each sun position into the directory that you specify. And it's best to import these using Excel because TracePro sends this out with tab delimiters, and it's just so simple to bring it in, and you get the nice column set up, and you can easily read this format if you do it in that manner. So let's do a demonstration. So here's the steps to run a complete series of solar simulations. In TracePro, create the solar collector geometry. Insert a receiver or surface name detector as defined in the solar utility analysis so that it matches the name of the detector that you use in the solar utility. You predefine all irradiance and candela map options. 
And then in the sole utility, you're probably going to want to run a ray trace and trace work just to verify that everything's set up correctly, of course, and do an analysis. And in the sole utility, you specify the location, the target time period, the interval period, the trajectory button to test that you have this set up correctly. You then select the sun model, either parallel or the surface source property. You specify the solar constant, and you press the start button. And then you can watch the simulation occur, and you can see what's going on because the results are updated as the solar utility runs. So here's your flow chart for actually going through that, and you can see that normally you would have the trace probe part of this only, but when you add the solar utility, we're going to reset the light source for each one of the ray traces so it's in the correct sun position. We're going to collect the ray trace result in the result viewer, and then you're going to have that nice analysis chart that you saw me show. So let's bring in a real system. This is a, uh, a U.S. patent for a dual Fresnel lens and a CPC system. And so we're going to create this in Trace Pro. And then we're going to open the solar utility, set up the filter, and analyze the result. So I'm going to use the 2D interactive optimizer to do this. And so what I do is I take a JPEG, a screen capture of that U.S. patent, and I put it right into the 2D interactive optimizer. And then I sketch this in using the tools in the 2D interactive optimizer. And then I use the nice Fresnel feature in the 2D Interactive Optimizer to create the Fresnels that you see here. So when we get done, you can actually see the system. And in this case, you see the results at 5 o'clock. And you see that for this particular system, it doesn't look like it's working very well because I'm getting very few or very little of the energy to the, the photovoltaic detector down here. In fact, we don't see a lot of rays being traced as well. Well, the reason for that is that this system actually works with a solar tracking system. And it works poorly unless the sun is directly overhead. So although it works, it works very poorly by itself, it's a great example for the solar utility because it proves how inefficient it is without the solar tracking system. So you can see the radiance results. It is quite poor. But if we go farther, we can see that, you know, once again, when the sun's directly overhead, it works pretty well. You can see the irradiance map down there on the left for the 10 a.m. sun position. So we actually are getting nice, diffuse light uh, across that particular sensor. And, you know, we're, we're able to track this using the solar utility. We're doing multiple periods. Everything's working just great here. But, of course, at the 5 p.m., you, you notice that the energy is, is quite a bit falling off. You don't have a lot of energy out here, you know, between the 8 and 10 a.m. time periods and, of course, after, like, the 2, 2 p.m. Uh, time period. So this is working out quite well in terms of the setup where we've set this geometry up in TracePro. We use the 2D Interactive Optimizer to do that. We then use the solar utility to set up the sun, go through and do the uh, interactive ray trace, and then see the results after we get done there. Well, at this point in time, I would like to do a live demonstration of this. So I'm going to pop out of the, the uh, webinar right now, and I'm going to bring TracePro up. So here we have the whole geometry that I was showing you earlier. And so this is the Fresnel lens. There's a second Fresnel underneath it, and then there's the CPC. And if we ray trace this particular system, we have not set up our source, so that's going to be a problem. Um, we need to bring the solar utility over to do that. So let me bring the solar utility over. And there we are. So as we can see over here, we can load files that we've saved previously. We can bring them in. And for this particular utility setup, I've got uh, Taiwan, Taipei as the city. Uh, coordinate format, there's my longitude and latitude. There, there is, for some reason, Boston over there because I'm not updated this, but let's map it. So I'm going to use the map it function. It's not going to show me exactly where I am in Taipei, Taiwan for this. And I'm going to specify a time period from Monday, October 8th, to from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So we've already looked at this system. This is the one I, I just showed you the results for. And if we calculate this, you can actually see where the sun's going to start for this particular model. And we can do the trajectory. It'll actually then chunk across and show us the sun as it moves across the solar collector system. Now, in the analysis portion of this, uh, we're going to set up where the entrance origin of this particular system is, the zenith, uh, the zenith direction, the north vector, and you can easily see that in the 3D view over here. You can see how you want to align these things up, and you can see that there's my north 
over there down the x-axis, and you can see the y is directly up, so that would be where my zenith is. Uh, the step interval is one hour. My detector is specified here, and that's specified in the photovoltaic, photovoltaic uh, model over here on uh, TracePro. And then I'm setting up the prefix of what I want the files to start with, the wavelengths, and I'm ready to go. If I want to save the flux report, I set that up. I'm using a very simple sun model, the parallel one. I could use a source property if I wanted to. Uh, there's my solar constant, 1067. I'm going to leave it constant. I hit the start button, and now we're going to go through and we're going to analyze this. Now the TracePro is going to start running and doing the simulation, but it's first it's going to delete all the files that were in that area if they have the name test whatever to start them up. And if I say yes to this, it'll actually start the, the whole system up. And I don't want to do that. What I'd rather do is then show you uh, that particular directory, and I'm going to do that now. Here's demo. And you can see all the results of that particular output. So you can see that we have candela maps. And if I bring this and draw this out, you can actually see the candela map for that particular iteration, which is late, so there was actually no power there. Let me get one that's probably at 3 o'clock. So there's your 3 o'clock for just a few rays being traced. So there's three incident rays here. So not really uh, a really good analysis of what I'd like to show you. I traced actually 100,000 for each one of these. But you can pretty much see that we've got the candela maps, we've got the irradiance maps, and we've got the flux reports and we can actually bring those up and, and take a look at those. So that's where all those files go, and that's where they, they end up, so you can actually look at them one-on-one -on -one later on after you've done the, uh, the particular system. So that's pretty much it for the, uh, the solar utility and how it all gets set up. So let me go back to the PowerPoint here. And the example files that I use for this particular system, this recorded session, and the slides for this webinar will be placed in the webinar section of the Lambda Research website, as always, for later viewing and use. The new solar utility will be released officially with the TracePro 7.3 release. That should probably be sometime in December. Uh, features that will come in later releases are things like indirect sun contribution and possibly solar tracking. So the solar utility is now in early access. We look forward to getting feedback from you. And please download the 7.3 early access release and try it out if you have time. I'll now open up everything to a question and answer session. And I see hey, thanks, that. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, so you got, I got, I've, got, um, I've got one question. Uh, it's not popped up yet, but um, maybe you want to touch on what versions of TracePro the solar utility is available in. Um, it is available in the 7.3 early access release, uh, which is on the website right now. So anybody who's underneath the support contract should be able to download that and try it out. And it will, the final release will be in, uh, in the 7.3 that I expect to have out in December. But as far as LC standard and expert? Ah, it's in all three editions. Yeah. Thank Very you for good. asking. Okay. Um, so get to started with the questions here. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, if anybody does have a question, please feel free to type it into the question box, box on your go to webinar control panel, and we'll address those now. Uh, first question, are there guidelines for the sun distance to make sure that it is approximately infinity? Uh, I guess placing the distance of the sun from the model. Um, believe it or not, I would say anything that's, uh, you were doing things in millimeters here. What, I'm, what we try to do in TracePro is that we actually want to see the sun in the model, so we actually put it off like 300 millimeters. Uh, for large systems, you're definitely going to want to have it uh, farther away, so you have the correct angler and a capability to actually have the light across the whole field. So you might want to do something like uh, a Pythagorean theorem where you specify what the angle is, uh, uh, for the sun coming in and then specify how far away that, that source should actually be to fill that entrance pupil. I think that uh, also, uh, yeah. oh, sorry. Uh, I guess to add to that, usually, I mean, the, the surface source property is going to take care of that angular distribution. Right. Uh, one thing you want to make sure is that your, your sun is placed far enough away that it does not hit parts of your model because the, the, the utility is actually inserting an object to represent the sun. So if it's going to intersect or crash into your model, you're going to get ray trace errors. So uh, you could probably even use the, the old rule of thumb for, for making light measurements uh, 10 times the largest distance of the, you know, the largest uh, diameter or the largest uh, dimension of your model could be a good starting point as well. OK, next question. Is the solar utility radiometrically, ac radiometrically accurate overall over the entire spectrum for the sun's emission? Um, that, uh, is, 
that's up to the Sun property that you use. Uh, if you go, if we go back to the If we go back to the setup and the setup analysis here, you see that you're able to specify a source catalog and a source property. So first of all, you're in control of that. You can specify it yourself. And I believe the source catalog and source property that we currently have in the program is, is, uh, has been verified to be accurate. Uh, Dave, you've probably looked at that more than I have. Do you have any comments? It is. It's, it's, a, it's an ASTM standard solar spectrum. Uh, it's in... I believe it may be displayed in Chapter 7 of the Trace Pro User Manual. Uh, so just search on, on Spectrum or for Solar and you can find it. But you also have the option of creating a new surface source property where you can define the, there it is, uh, where you can define uh, really any solar spectrum you want. If you have a solar spectrum, you can bring it in either as a text file or if you have it graphically, you can recreate it using the, the surface source property generator utility. Uh, make a new new property based on that spectrum. And then as long as you trace enough wavelengths, you need to set up in that the setup screen or the analysis screen that Mike was showing, you need to define the wavelengths that you want to use. Uh, and then it'll weight that appropriately. So yes, uh, I guess the, the quick answer to that question is yes, we can. It can be radiometrically accurate across the spectrum. Okay, next question is, uh, when you mentioned future options, you mentioned solar tracking. Uh, does this imply adjusting the model geometry for different sun positions? So changing the geometry for the different positions. Yes, it does. But I believe it will only be for one axis. It will not be a dual axis system um, that we're planning for right now. So if you, if you had a concentrator, it would be rotating the concentrator to follow the sun. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily be changing the shape of the concentrator. That's correct. If I'm, okay. That'll just be uh, changing the orientation. That is correct. Okay. That's the the last question I have right here right now. So again, we'll we'll make. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, is there some examples with the with the early access release uh, that somebody can use to try it out? Well, we're going to be putting the uh, the example that I have here up on the website. Uh, for this webinar, so you will be able to download that one. Um, I have not thought further about putting a, a couple more together. Uh, the easiest one would, of course, just be a, a block that sits out there at zero, zero, zero. You could start with that uh, as well. So the things that we're actually working on, they are, I mean, a lot of this geometry is built into Trace Pro as is, and you can also use the 2D Interactive Optimizer to go through and create that type of geometry. So. I think a lot of this stuff is just very, very simple geometry in most cases. Um, I, I think that's where I'm at right now. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, I think the the utility itself is relatively straightforward. Um, I've done a lot of pre demos on it just by inserting a simple disk into the into the Trace Pro model to represent an absorber and then just to, to show different effects of the ray tracing. And then you, you can, you can uh, ramp up the complexity from there. But you know you can use Trace Pro. You can model CPCs directly in Trace Pro. The Fresnel lenses, or as Mike's mentioned, using the uh, people have standard and expert right now can also use the the two D and three D interactive optimizers to create these shapes. I did not show the uh, the two D interactive optimizer, but this is what the two D interactive optimizer looks like, and all you're doing is completely sketching in uh, using the bitmap tool, and I'm going to be in the toolbox over here. So you can bring any bitmap you want uh, into the into the model. Just place it on top over here and sketch it in, and then you can just specify what the Fresnel type is. So I grab this this particular curve, I specify what type of Fresnel type I want to use, whether curved or triangular, and I specify that it's Fresnel. Uh, and then you specify which one of these options equal width, equal height, DOE, and it automatically creates it for you. So, in terms of setting up some of these examples, I, I'm going to have this one up, but uh, you know. The sky is the limit in terms of just bringing in the 2D interactive optimizer and tracing these things very, very quickly. Okay. okay, well, I don't see any questions, so I guess with that we can wrap this up. Uh, thank you, Mike, for another excellent presentation. Uh, as Mike mentioned, uh, the archive version of this webinar will be on the website uh, shortly, probably within the next couple days. Uh, 
so you'll be able to download both the webinar and the examples as well as along with the slides. Uh, so with that, I'm going to say good afternoon uh, or good day, and we look forward to seeing everybody at our next webinar. Thank you very much. Mike? And bye for now, everyone. Thanks.